I want to talk about a habit that I think is so universal. It's part of being human. It's what makes us human. I want to help us to stop doing it. That is, I want to help us to stop hurting ourselves. I want to help us stop playing a role in our own suffering. That is to stop hurting ourselves. Something that in theory, we're obviously wired to avoid. We're wired to avoid self-inflicted pain in life. Our body tells us to let go of something if it's burning us. Our body says, stop putting weight on our ankle if it's hurt. But mentally, it's another story. Our minds say, keep going, keep doing that thing mentally that hurts you each and every time you do it. But don't stop. Don't do anything differently. Don't dig in differently. Just keep hurting yourself. It's very strange how much we hold on to the proverbial mental hot pan, but physically we let go. And so this is for you if you've been through a breakup recently or some kind of pain or frustration maybe with friends or someone else. I find the pain and suffering I'm about to talk about usually stems from other people. So this is for you if you've been hurt or disappointed in some way by others and you continue to revisit it mentally and you hurt yourself each and every time you do in your heart without an end in sight. And so really the point of this in that sense is to help us realize the difference between pain and suffering because one we cannot control, it's life for you, but the other we can We can put an end to it the moment we're willing to do so. And therein lies the key to no longer playing a role in your own suffering. So plainly, I realized that pain in life is something that happens to you, to each and every one of us. It's the result of being part of life. It's the result of being human. It's the result of freedom of choice that each of us has been gifted the day we were born. Pain is the result of the world being filled with people who are just bouncing around and inevitably we're going to bounce into each other. The pain you might feel in life is the result of someone choosing themselves over you, choosing themselves over being honest. The pain you feel is the result of being lied to or cheated on or let go of or overlooked. The pain you feel in life is the result of someone dumping you or hurting you, whatever it may be. You certainly can play a role in that with the choices you make and the actions you take, but for the most part, pain happens to you. And it's a component of life that none of us can avoid. And I'm going to stay away from pain that comes from grief or a loss here. That requires, obviously, quite a bit more unpacking. But for this, let's keep it simple. I'm talking about pain that happens to you as a result of people being people, people not meeting you at your level, people not being honest with you, people overlooking you, the pain you feel because of actions that happen to you. Suffering then comes when we allow that pain to become a story that persists in our hearts. They are out of the picture. Suffering, though, is the story that we continue and continue to tell ourselves. Suffering comes from the story we tell ourselves. It comes from our snap judgment of what the pain means. It comes from our first and oftentimes permanent assumption about what the pain means. It comes from a mix of reality and assumption. It comes from a mix of reality and imagination, insecurity and doubt, and all these things that are symptoms of pain. Suffering takes the form of, they lied to me because I deserved it. I didn't get that job because I'm not worthy of being successful. That friend ghosted me because I'm a freaking weirdo and I'm not easy to be friends with. That person cheated on me because I didn't love them hard enough. They left me to be with someone else because I'm inadequate, right? And we don't always say those things directly to ourselves, but we'd be lying if we said we didn't partake in the very human practice of taking pain and turning it into a story that is larger than the pain itself. We all do this. It's almost inevitable. We turn pain into a narrative to fit the pain, to support it to be like supporting facts in a thesis we're making up in our minds. And if we've been hurt in the same way multiple times, we become so resolute in our suffering in that story that it's tough to escape. And I'm sure you can relate to this in some way. I know I can. We we all have these sneaking suspicions about ourselves that maybe we don't voice, but they're key ingredients in our own suffering. And pain catalyzes them. It brings them out of hiding. Someone hurts us, we don't find clarity around it, and we don't realize that their treatment of us is a reflection of them, not us. And so we start to bring those sneaky suspicions, those stories, to the surface. We start to say things like, maybe I really am unlovable, or that pain made me realize I'm ugly, or I'm not successful enough to do X, Y, Z, or I'm not worthy, right? Sneaky little suspicions that, again, we don't say out loud, but they become narratives in our head following pain. And that, my friend, is suffering. It's turning a pain into a story that has no redemption, no reinvention, no possibility of a rewarding chapter. 
And of course, it's normal. I don't know many people who have the emotional maturity at any age, frankly, to be hurt in some way and to say, that is on them, not me. That kind of wisdom, I suppose, can take a lifetime. So rather, we're all wired to make pain about us, to poke and prod at ourselves at what we perceive as inadequacies. It's just what we do. And that's how we end up taking pain from 1.0 to 2.0, pain to suffering. And so to put an end to the role we play in our own suffering, we have to stop that story in its tracks. That is the story we tell ourselves. We have to realize that as humans, we are built to withstand pain. And I know that sounds a little weird, but the human body and mind can really take a beating. We are constructed this way because life has a lot of beatings to offer us, and we can handle them. We can handle the pain. We can weather it. We can turn pain into wisdom. We can reinvent ourselves from the ruins of pain. We can use pain to upgrade, and it'll never be worth it. We'll never make the most of it. We'll never turn setbacks into comebacks if we allow pain to become suffering, turning pain into stories that are not redeeming where we deserved the pain, where we were the reason for the pain. We aren't good enough. We're not lovable. We're hard to love. We're ugly. We're awkward. We're weird, whatever it may be. The key to breaking this cycle of pain turned to suffering is something that I talked about maybe 200 episodes ago. And it's the question of what if you're wrong? What if you've been putting yourself in a corner for no reason? What if you allow pain, what if you've allowed pain to become what some people like to refer to as a limiting belief? And your suffering is coming from those limiting beliefs for little to no reason. Limiting beliefs like I'm not lovable, no one understands me, I'm not attractive, I'm not smart, I have too much baggage, whatever. Those are the stories we tell ourselves and it comes from pain and it persists within our suffering because we keep repeating it. But what if you're wrong? (laughs) What if I'm wrong? What if we've backed ourselves into corners for no reason? Do you actually have proof in your life that your assumption, the story you tell yourself, is true? Actually, definitively, here is exhibit A, your honor, true. Not just in your head, because it's the human thing to do, but actually true. Do you have proof that no one understands you, that you're unworthy for everything you do, that you're unlovable for anyone in your life, that you're a weirdo to every single person? Well, no, of course not. You might have a couple of examples of people and experiences that fit that bill, but everyone, forever, in every context? Of course not. So what if you're wrong? What if your assumption is wrong? Just ask yourself this for a moment. If you're wrong, wouldn't it change things? It would mean you don't have to keep living in that suffering. It would mean you don't have to turn the pain into suffering. It would mean you could break that lease and move on in a slightly more optimistic manner. And furthermore, I remember talking about this like two years ago, but when you start to break down the wall and ask yourself, what if I'm wrong? It leads you to ask another powerful question. Because if I'm wrong, then why not me? Why not me? If I'm wrong, and I've been putting myself in a corner, a corner of suffering for no reason other than being human, why then am I not worthy of the things I say I want but got pain instead? Who says I'm not worthy? Why not me? In a world where someone is going to win, right? Someone is going to be happy and fulfilled. Someone's going to travel and be successful and find their partner. Someone is going to live an incredible life. Someone is going to ask for what they want and they're going to get it. In that world, why can't that person be you? Why not you? Someone will. Why can't that person be you? And obviously, I don't know you, but when you start with the question of what if I'm wrong, I'm willing to bet that in a sense, some sense, you're going to realize that you are wrong. And in this context, it's the greatest gift in the world to be wrong, to say I'm wrong. That's great news because it's how you break out of suffering but you have to create a window of opportunity for you to do that in the first place. Break the pain suffering cycle. Create a window of opportunity for yourself to prove your limiting beliefs are wrong. What if I'm wrong? Really, this is mindfulness in a nutshell, right? It's taking old beliefs. I've been through experience A, therefore I'm B and C and D. It's taking those old beliefs that say I'm, I've been rejected or misunderstood or overlooked or manipulated and therefore I'm unlovable or I'm a failure or I'm too much to handle. And it's saying... In the face of those assumptions, what if I'm wrong? What if those things did happen and they were real and they hurt? They hurt practically and they hurt on a deep level. But what if it's not about me and my worth? What if those instances were about them and their doubt and their insecurity and their immaturity? What if it wasn't about me? What if it's not about always and forever? What proof do I have that this is it and will always be the case with everyone and forever? No one on earth can provide that proof. No matter how deep you are in your own suffering, you can't. You might be inclined to try, but you can't. 
And certainly I'm not advocating for some toxic positivity here that says anything is possible. I could do everything I put my mind to. That, of course, remains to be seen. But I do know that you have no proof, no basis to stand on that says you have to continue to dwell in your own suffering. You don't have to allow that cycle to continue to play out. You can see the pain. You can learn from it. You could turn it into wisdom. And sometimes you're tempted to allow it to follow you further. When that's the case, you say, what if I'm wrong? And see how that would change things. See how that would change your reinvention of yourself and what comes next and the second chances you can give yourself. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you a reason to put an end to the pain to suffering cycle.